Hey guys, Colleen Gallagher here and welcome to episode 71 of the Colleen Gallagher podcast. If you're here, welcome. If it's your first time, so honored, so excited. You've chosen to tune in to receive a frequency that's going to transform your life in ways that you never knew is possible. And for those of you who are returning avid listeners of the Colleen Gallagher podcast, welcome. I love you. I hope you're having the most beautiful moment in time when tuning into this and just so you guys know, the intention of every episode is to create a space where you're able just to tune in. You're able to be here to expand your mind, to expand your heart into remembering who you were always meant to become into living a life that you are so passionate about and to earning money that really feels good in a way that, you know, you're living your purpose as well as falling absolutely in love. And so today we have an amazing conversation that we're going to co-create with a guy I met at a networking event. And he really blew me away with some of the conversations we were having. So I know you guys are going to absolutely love him. But before I get into that, I'm going to get into our sponsor. So today's sponsor is DB Journey. It's brought to you by, or sorry, DB is a Scandinavian brand that makes backpacks and bags to help people on the move stay ready for anything. From the streets to the peaks, DB's gear is travel tested by some of the world's best athletes, adventurers, and creators. Over the past decade, DB has designed and developed, released, and refined the best bags in the market. With DB's patented hookup system, you are able to attach smaller products to your backpack, roller, or tote. This is absolutely perfect because you guys know I'm such a traveler, 42 countries, lived in five countries, having the perfect backpack to travel with or purse or bag that's practical, not just fashionable is required so that you don't have headaches. You don't feel like you forgot things and your back does not hurt. And so we are teaming up with DB to exclusively offer our listeners 10% off your next person purchase by using the code pod 10 P as in Pam, O as in Oscar D as in dog one zero are going to the link in our show notes, DB it's time to move on time to get going. And with that, I'm super excited. We're going to welcome Aaron Sanchez, who is the host of ABC News Radio and KMET. It's every morning, Monday to Friday at 8 a.m. PST. I was just on it, you guys. I'll leave the link here so you can check it out. And Aaron, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I was excited to have you on. I know our listeners enjoyed every single minute of it. And I think if anything, People are going to buy your book. I know I've got to get the signed copy version one, especially the afterpay, because I need to like break down my payment plan. Yeah. And I think that the other thing that I really love that you shared, um, that when we were talking, so I met Aaron at a networking event for those, you know, who are on here, I've not been a fan of networking events. I'm like socially awkward. I feel like sometimes and I've really had to overcome that in my business. I built my business online. And I kind of could just run ads or do the things. So being in person again, especially after the pandemic, this was my first one. It was actually so nice and I really enjoyed it. And Aaron and I were sitting next to each other and we got in a really deep conversation about purpose and the cosmos and your calling and healing. And Aaron just has like this wealth of knowledge and presence on what it really means to kind of open your mind into the unknown. And that's probably what I call it. And so I just maybe wanted to start with like, what really got you into the mind frame or into the habit of living your purpose of living a life that you love of knowing that there's something greater out there than just this tangible world. Um, I think for me, it's a little bit, um, broad and, and, and I hate to say broad, but I say, you know, this, I say, I grew up very religious. I gave up, I, I grew up very Christian and I grew up very, um, knowing a lot about the Bible. And then I had to kind of, in a way, realize that there's so many different faiths and so many different beliefs and so many different versions of faith, that there's so many great conversations that happen beyond just what one person may believe. And, and in fact, we all can learn from each other. We can learn uh, from uh, Buddhists. We can learn from Muslim. We can learn from um, um, um all, all sorts of, you know, new age or, or what I call old age thinking. And, you know, there's, there's Mayan history, there's newfound history. There's, there's so many things in between. There's the galaxy that we live in. There's, there's science, there's intelligent people, intelligent life. And I honestly, when I started saying, okay, suspend your disbelief just for a minute of what you truly feel you believe and hear somebody else out and then say, okay, 
what about that makes sense? Because I feel that the majority of us, although we view things differently, we have kind of an overwhelming theme to understand life in all of its present forms. Whatever form it is, it's important to understand it in all its forms. And then kind of go back to your own central belief and then build upon it. And then you can make that kind of go next level, like faith. What is faith? What is faith in the unseen? What is faith in the normally seen? And the stuff that you talk about and that others talk about day to day to day to life, transformation, uh, manifestation, and all those things are uh, based upon different types of beliefs at different times in the past history of all men. So if we were able to kind of get all people into one room, what is it we would learn from one another that we don't already know? I believe any one of us have about like anywhere from eight to 20% of overall truth, but where's the rest of the truth? And that part is what I love to kind of open things and say, okay, what am I willing to at least listen to then maybe not always accept, but maybe adopt later on, because then I'll say, oh, I see how those things correlate in order to help people in life. Because I always say, if it helps you in life for good, then it can't be all that bad. And if it is all bad, then, well, I just need a better perspective of things to understand what's more good than bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I agree. And I like what you said, and I've never heard that number, but 80 to 20% is what we know of truth. I think that's such an important thing, because I think so many of us, especially after everything that's just happening in the world, like, I mean, it's just a wild time to be alive really, but we always kind of want to feel like we're right or we're in the knowing. And I know a lot of people who are like, I know what's really happening. You know, I know. Mm -hmm. And we get in this like very, um, warped reality when we're so Mm -hmm. like wanting to prove what we know that's not publicly known. When I think the greatest truth of all, which is like what you're saying is, is more just like mastery of self. And I think that's really the truth because I think like when you try to have truth of all of this external world, you're going to get really distracted because that truth in the external reality is always changing. Like what we knew five years ago is different than what we knew now, you know, what we even knew at the beginning of the pandemic and what we know now is very different, you know, like knowledge and that truth is always changing. And people are so tied to like, this is what I know to be true. This is what has to happen, or this is what it is you kind of going to miss out on a lot of opportunities like you shared, because you aren't going to be willing to listen to something that could really actually catapult you into where you really want to go instead of being married to this like current space where you're in. Yeah. I, I, I will say this, like, you know, I've always had limiting beliefs in the past and I realized that my friends or those that I associate with, or that kind of came into my life unexpectedly. So were the ones that kind of unveil certain things that I've always been told, but it's kind of like that whole situation where people go, you know, my mom or dad used to tell me that, but now I listen to my friend or, you know, why does it take a friend to kind of unlock that thing that your father or your mother always said to you or your aunt or your uncle or your grandpa or your grandma. And all of a sudden now it makes sense. For example, think positively, right? We've Mm -hmm. all heard it, but I think Um, And I remember this happening very, very clear with me, where I would more or less think in the opposite way of things are not going to work out because things had a way of not working out systematically, right? Anytime I was hopeful for something, things would not work out until finally somebody said something and it was a co-host of mine. Her name is Kelly, Kelly V. Dolan. And she said, just say yes. I try to say yes to every opportunity. And then I thought, well, I don't want to say yes to every opportunity because that means then I'm going to say yes to everything. But but I said, you know, I'm going to flip my my thinking a little bit more because how far has my thinking gotten me up until now? And honestly, I said, okay, let me adopt that for a little bit. And then I adopted that and I said, you know what, that actually works. And I remember meeting very uh, upset people and mad people and angry people that were actually younger than me, like, you know, close to like, nine and 10, who I remember speaking like I used to speak like nothing ever works out anyway. I said, you know what, why don't you suspend your disbelief on that just for uh, like a week and start practicing something that will push you to being more positive than not. I get it. There is no such thing as all 100% positive. None of us live that life. Mm. We have to deal with the complexities of life like coronavirus. We're living through Mm. that. Although we would like to imagine it's not there, we still have a way of finding it, getting our, our bodies in a way that we're, we're more, you know, uh, attuned to that of 
uh, the best that it can be. You know, I know you speak of frequency and you speak of different things that you could bring your um, your life's um, inner being into something of which it could be of a higher uh, mindset. But um, let's just say we both had coronavirus. What mm-hmm. would get us to be okay with each other? Wouldn't it be the communication of one another to be able to say, hey, we can get through this. Let me get somebody to help you. That would be the positive thinking that I would say is more functional than just sitting there and saying, it's gonna be positive, it's gonna be positive, it's gonna be positive. Let's reach out to the people that we're drawn to or that get drawn to us to help us out in order to have a positive life in what would seem as a very debilitating thing that I know some friends have already passed from this world, you know, Mm -hmm. Some would say, is it to the next or is it to whatever the after is, or are they waiting consciousness to rebound? Whatever your belief is, we know that life continues and it moves on. But as we are here on this earth in this flesh and body, may we live the best that we can day in and day out with one another, hearing each other's thoughts, because isn't that why we're here as well to help one another, to be there for one another, be there for family, to help one another out. It's very kind of basic but when you go out into the world and you go there's other people here that uh, thankfully i'm not alone if you were alone on an island it would be a very depressing state of mind to stay in and that unfortunately is what some people have found themselves in that they don't need to if they just say look i'm going to realign with people that were in my childhood days and see how they're doing go see you know your girlfriends that you know you grew up with at you know 12 13 14 15 and 16 and then revitalize that and then say you know what what are we doing? Why are we letting little personal anxieties or frustrations or little he said, she said, kind of keeping us apart when we can kind of just resolve to make things right, no matter what? Yeah, I really like that you're sharing this. And one thing that you said that I think is so powerful, I want to I want to emphasize here is, can you just suspend that belief? Oh, wow, that was powerful and profound. Like if you can just suspend that belief for a week, yeah. And then transform it into what I love that you said. It's not just thinking positive, like the practical thing to say with your language. Like one thing, and I think a lot of us, like you said, we feel alone or I feel alone, but instead of it saying like, I feel alone, it's like better to say, you know, what, I, I desire connection. I'm really mm-hmm. open to mm-hmm. connection. And I think even that just mindset, but it's like really paying attention to your language patterns and what you're sharing and how you can do that. Like one thing I say a lot when people are dating, they're like, I feel like I'm not understood and they don't understand me, or I'm never heard. And I go, why don't you say like, I want to be heard, or I Mm. like when you listen to me, or I, what was the other one? Like just all these things of, instead of like saying, I don't want this, or you don't understand me. Like, I want to be understood by you. Like, I want to be loved by you. I want to appreciate you. And I want to feel appreciated. Like if we started saying that instead of like these fights, if you don't do this and don't do this, well, the more we just say that, the more that's going to happen. And so I love that you just said that, can we suspend that belief? Can we suspend that? Like, that is such a beautiful opportunity for people to become aware of what's happening. And then the practical steps you gave are practical language patterns to change that. And I think it's so powerful because I think we've all been trained for so long to kind of think in this mindset of like, if I just say that I don't like this, if I know what I don't like, then what I do like is obviously going to come or it's obviously going to get better. The more I kick and scream and throw a tantrum on this, the louder that I become something then will get done. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in spiritual teachings and not so much about the loudness, but it's kind of like, even in movies, like your silence is golden. And I think I used to think that being so loud and so whatever was so powerful. And I really have learned and I've transitioned really even in the past four or five months of like that silence is golden. And, and even since I was hacked on Facebook, I, I transitioned that a lot as well. And I feel like that was a big awakening for me, but I, I, I think in what we deeply care about, it's like your silence is more powerful because it's like, you're at a point when you're no longer giving your power away to someone, you're no longer allowing this like anger within you or frustration to be risen and pointed at someone else. Instead, you're silently working within. And when we're silent, that's when the best ideas come. That's when the Mm -hmm. creativity comes. That's when we actually begin to like hear what's occurring inside of us so that we can be moved into action. So I just love that you brought that up. And I think it's one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. So yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> I think yeah, the other thing absolutely. I want to just talk into is like, I think a lot of people here, they, you know, want to get involved in podcasting or radio or 
just like a media, like they feel like they have a message. They have something they really want to share. And obviously you have a show every day, which is incredible. Um, you've done a lot of other shows I know throughout your career, like what inspired you to do that? What are some steps of courage people can say to like, start speaking, even if it's scary, like who's going to listen to me, no one's going to show up, you know, like it can feel that way. Or even, you know, pitching yourself to a radio, like, yeah, if you could just maybe walk us through that process, I think a lot of people here would be really fascinated to have that practical framework. Yeah, I, I, I get asked all the time, you know, how did you get into radio? And I hate answering in this way, but I say it kind of found me because it really did. Um, the circumstances that I found myself by saying yes to opportunities that I would normally say no, I would kind of like, I'd want to say no. And then I'd say, oh, wait, let me, I'm working on it. So just say yes. And, and, you know, if the no was bigger than the yes, of course, like certain commitments or prior commitments, then I would have to kind of balance that out versus, you know, because there gets to be a point where people start taking advantage of your yes, 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 yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you have to learn the limit of that. But because I say there's always a balance to everything. But the reality is, as I started to say yes, in my life, there were more opportunities that came. And so the radio as as much as I hate saying this, for me, at least kind of came to me, but it wasn't something I ever set out to do. I wanted to just do voiceovers. It was as simple as that. And I'm still haven't done any voiceovers that I've been wanting to do, which are like cartoon characters or voices or, you know, fun things. Um, so, you know, you laugh because is that something you've been wanting to do? No, I laugh because I just listened to a woman named Caroline Mass. She's a medical intuitive and it's like this groundbreaking thing. She does. And she's like, I sought my life out to literally be in a fiction novel person. And I'm a medical intuitive. What does that even mean? She exactly. was like, and so it's just funny because I listen to that and you saying that it's yeah. just, it really is true. It, it, it is true. And, and what I say though, is this, if don't even think of it like radio, think of it as any type of broadcast be open to. And I say that because I've talked to radio personalities and they're so segmented on just only audio that I say, how come you're not doing video? because video is where everything lives. And I come from the old days of like MySpace and the beginnings of YouTube before streaming was a thing. So I was the one that kind of brought in the new media age of, of kind of onto the radio form, at least locally. And I'm the one that said, look, we need to do just video for my show. At that time it was called Live with Aaron and Kelly. And I did it for my show. And then I helped other people do it for their show. So now they're more video centric than just radio. So I always say this, if you want to get on national broadcast or even local broadcasting of radio, have some type of form of just anything, you know, simple, like a podcast, anybody could start one and then take it to the next level because commercial broadcast does allow you certain things that others uh, do not, which is uh, more visibility. And of course, uh, branding, branding is always important when you align with, you know, that's why I love the ABC brand because the ABC with KMET 1490 AM is one of which allows me to kind of go that next step with certain interviews or certain personalities that would otherwise say, yeah, I don't want to interview with you if I just had my own little talk show on my own Facebook feed, for example, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what happens. Then you have to kind of go based on who you know, what you know, and, and then some. But going back to the very early days of me, it started on, honestly with a nonprofit in East LA, which um, I helped them out with their interviews. But I just was like, I want to get fun interviews for kids uh, to want to go to college, for example. And I said, who can I talk to? And I wanted to do actors and celebrities and even personalities that just made sense to kids. And then the message was going to be, um, how can you yourself go to college, right? And I was, I was given that task. And I said, okay, how do I reach out? And honestly, I used at the time MySpace to get a hold of certain people. Not everybody responded, but those that did like Chuy Martinez of Kiss FM, which, you know, has gone on and done some great things since then. Roxy, who was also on, on uh, I think Latino 96.3 at the time and other ones, I would reach out online and then they said, sure. And I had a little video program. It was terrible, like cameras. It was terrible uh, equipment, but we just did it. And they're still on YouTube. Um, and because you can do one thing once and then broadcast it forever in a day on YouTube, hopefully YouTube stays forever. Um, you can have that and then build upon that. Does that make sense? And that's mm -hmm. what I feel like podcasters are doing. I just say to podcasters, cause it's very simple to get a mic, to get, uh, audio, and then to get a recording, uh, device or something that will record really good audio 
put it on a podcast, but I say always go with video. Video lives supreme. There are some people that only like to listen because they're driving and or they just are very audible people. And then there's all other people that love to watch. So you've got Instagram Live. You've got all these other programs that you can re uh, broadcast your stuff too. And then television comes into line. I've done television and it sits on all platforms. But if I was only radio, I would not have the video component to all the stuff that I've ever done, hosting and red carpets and other things. So I always say, be open to doing the very least of them, get on a podcast, but then go, okay, how can I go on the video? If you get on the video early, everything else is much easier. So mm -hmm. if you do that, it'll be easier for yourself to pitch yourself to any radio station um, and or a public entity or uh, even television because now you have basically your own demo reel you have your own content and how many different shows are we seeing on ESPN and other network shows where they're technically two people talking you know in a room because of coronavirus so now yeah. it's almost a very common thing and if you have it already done and branded you have what I like which is more branding uh, visuals like you have good mm -hmm. uh, visuals to be able to kind of put out there I'm not that strong on that but like some people don't understand, sometimes you don't have a team. Sometimes you're doing everything. And I say, if you can try to get somebody early on with even if you're making some money or if you have some money, hire somebody on Fiverr. I've heard so many good personalities, including YouTube artists and YouTubers that have basically handed off the book of business to somebody else to do that for, you know, pennies on the dollar for somebody mm -hmm. that wants to do it and or you know, a kid that's, uh, you know, in Wisconsin or Missouri that wants mm -hmm. to do that for you as well as a huge fan. They're like, yeah, I could do that for you as well. That teaches them a set of things. I've had interns work for me and gone on to do great things, fashion artists and such. And now I'm thinking I need more interns. But my point <laughs> is, you know, have a good group of people that you could team up with. And then if you can trust them and you can love them and you can help them along the way, they may move on from you later in life. But if you can team up with the good ones around you all the time, it'll help you go to that next step. And as far as being like pitching yourself to a radio broadcast, there are some that honestly, you pay a, a bit of money, you get a, a branded person, they pay you like, you know, $800, you put like $150 uh, per week to a, a radio station and boom, you're on the radio all of a sudden. So there's opportunities to look for like that, that exists. And then there's national contract deals which technically you need at least an agent or a contract manager to be able to help you with, but you got to start somewhere. And I say, at least start by doing what comes easy, meaning you have the ability to pick up your phone, talk into it and, or get a device and just start creating content. If it start, if you start that way, very simple and you have the motive to do it, it'll take you to that next step. Eventually the quick question is always, how do I get really big, really quick, really fast? And I say, um, align yourself with people that have already done it, ask them a bunch of questions and then figure out the next step. Yeah. I love that you shared this and a couple of things. I, th I think you provided such a beautiful framework and I'm so happy that everyone listening is going to do that because I'm definitely more of like the creative feminine. So sometimes I can be a bit ungrounded going into my theories or how I've done the things in the manifestation. I love how practical, masculine, grounded, beautiful. It is like, these are the steps to do. And I think even our phones, I mean, anyone who has an iPhone, I mean, they, those mics are incredible. I mean, those yeah. were like mics, like literally 20 years ago or <laughs> like thousands yeah. of dollars. And now it's yeah. in your phone. So well, it's I a just, payment plan. I mean, it's not like you have to pay, you know, $1,300 right away. And so if yeah. you think of like, even, even something like that, I want, I want to kind of, you know, get somebody something, cause I know somebody's probably listening going, well, how can I do that? Um, camera equipment is very expensive, but if you kind of are able to do like a payment plan situation, probably better to do that. And then you are good with the math of how much you need to make per month in order to not only pay for that, but then also pay for other things. Like you have the ability to tie into said advertisers or sponsors. Then of course, you know how much money you're able to make with that and or click to buy, right? And or books, because books are a great way and a great segment into um, uh, speaking engagements are a great way to get the knowledge out there. And even if you have, um, even I've seen many books, mm -hmm. if you have something to share, get it written, get it done and get it out there. Self-publishing is a thing. Massive publishing is a thing. You were able to figure it out for your own books and that's what gets you opportunities. And if you just had like a marketing team to be able to say, okay, get on every single podcast and every single national broadcast, 
possible, you would go next level very quick, very fast. I've seen it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do have a PR firm, which is funny, but we focused, we're like the first part that we want to focus on is writing because that's my specialty of writing. So right now with my third book, we are in a bunch of magazines and like I'm getting monthly ones. So that basically we're taking up the SEO space. So that way when people go, if they do hear me on like a podcast or they hear me on something, they go to Google, they're going to see so many articles of stuff to know that it's not just that. So I really kind of did it, I guess, as my niche, which is digital and writing. And that next level, definitely what you're saying is the kind of more TV and the radio and those other parts. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, but it's funny how I did that. Cause I agree with you. Like I, some people have asked me it before and probably th- some of you listening wonder why, like I haven't maybe done more video or TV, but I did just get my first TV like segment. It's on a coaching thing. It will, we shoot January, 2022. So like the opportunities are naturally happening, but, uh, it's funny that you brought that up because that's definitely something that I've thought about of why that happened. But I think everyone's life journey is kind of theirs. Like some people I know a lot that aren't on social media, right. They just did like kind of in person and then they have to build the digital. I think your path just reveals itself to you, but what you love and what I wanted to share about content creation. I know you guys, I have so many courses on this. If you really want to do content creation, I recommend my create, write, share, receive course that really teaches you how to create, um, write, share and receive money. So it's the, um, sister or the sister course to my earn income online bundle, which that's more like the masculine structure systems, what to do. But what you said, and I wanted to share is like, whatever, the content you're meant to create, if you just go to your YouTube, if you look at the last five calls that you talked with someone, if you look at your text messages, like there's going to be a consistent pattern of what you're talking about, whether it's relationships, whether it's drama, whether it's traveling, whether it's your family, like there's going to be something that shows up as a consistency. And that is what you're meant to talk about. That is your content. And it can see something like I said, I had a client that was my, like the most kind of out there client, but he was a bee farmer and he wanted to get more of his, um, honey into like, uh, what's it called? What, what's those things called? Farmer's market. There we go. Okay. Farmer's market. And I was like, and yeah. so he wanted that and he didn't really have business or manifestation. We started working together and he got within like three weeks, he got in like eight new farmer's markets to distribute his honey, to get more things. And so that was like, so cool. Cause I never knew anything about the farming process and bees and honey and like what made it special. Like I had no idea. And I learned all this stuff from my clients, but he started sharing more of these facts. And I'm like, this is what people need to know. Like if they knew that they would definitely get you their honey just because you're educating them on something that's fascinating. And so I said, I think like you have to think of those things, whether it's Legos, whether it's literally fabrics, like it's, there's nothing that is off limits. Like I always say, like, if you just go in a home and you were to look around a home, how many people have touched different things from the creative, from the patent to the um, manufacturing, to the distribution, to the shipping, to the, per- the credit card swiping. Like there's so many things that are involved in one thing, or let alone a whole home arriving together. And yep. every single person was passionate about something. And so that's your, what, that's your, what on what to create content on. And then basically once you have that, everything Aaron said is absolutely the framework to follow. And it will just happen. And, um, the other I, thing I, I, oh, go ahead. I, I, I want to say, well, I, I want to say this. I want you're saying. Mm-hmm. I have had so many conversations with people that have an idea or have a thought or have a product in mind, and they sometimes will often say, mm-hmm. "I thought of that. I wish I would have gotten that done." They don't say, "I wish I would have got that done." They just say, "I thought of that. How dare somebody else?" Kind of in their mind. Then they kind of go on. I go, "Wait, that means you have good ideas." And we live in a connected culture now that we never have before. That you don't even need a college degree in order to say, okay, let me go do the research online, see what's necessary, see what kind of people I could team up with because we're internationally connected. We're internationally kind of able to reach out to manufacturing facilities, even abroad. Um, And there's so many different things now that we could say, okay, I need to do the research and then commit to doing a certain amount of research, like a day and a half, and then putting your plan in order to say, okay, next step, I need to get proof of product. How do I get there? And then get with at least three to four to five people and get those conversations started on the phone and say, okay, I have an idea. I want to get this to the next level. How do I do it? And then team up with, you know, people that can actually help you along the way. I always say team up with people that are smarter than you, that will teach you along the way. Don't let their negative moments go. Well, I've heard that that's already happened. This or that keep onto it, but know that there's ways to do it simple and fast and effective 
even if you get your first one done and it is a flop. Never worry about that first one being a flop because I see that's usually the thing that stops people from starting it in the first place. They go, well, what if nobody like reads my story? No, what if mm-hmm. nobody reads it? So what? Who cares? Your mom will read it or your dad will read it, you know, <laughs> or somebody will read it and mm-hmm. then just get it done. And then once you get the first one done, how much simpler is it to do the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, right? Yeah. I love that you're sharing this because something Abraham Hicks said, and I never, like it never landed until kind of my business is where it is now, Mm -hmm. but she always says something of like, you know, you're always closing the gap. And I think of like my first online program, right? Oh my God, the hours and time anxiety, all the things that went into even making that, like, is it going to be enough? Is it giving this like, and that is still my most extensive course. Like it is so packed with so much stuff. And it's funny because it took me so long, right? I think that took me months to build. Now I can build a course within a matter of hours. Like I can literally from the idea to creation, to writing it down, to doing a sales page, to having it done. But like I closed the gap on investing time in mentors, investing times in different funnels, having the branding, like all these things that I've done and even products, right? Like now for me to have an idea and then make it a product. I mean, that time frame idea to action is so short because I already have like names of suppliers. I already know the process. I already know how to do it. Like I already know my filtering system. Yeah. And so it's a rinse and repeat system for you. Yeah. Once And obviously like the actual creation of the product is different. That's where like the lead time, like I said, or I said this earlier on Aaron's show, like my lead times of products, they're getting more complex. I'm getting more detailed. I'm getting more specific. So as you're doing that, right, the lead time of it is like a little bit longer than just like, okay, I can place an order. (laughs) Like you're getting more customized and more specific, but that's still that process. It's becoming shorter. And even like the podcast, when I did CGR, like you guys, I remember when I was so excited for like, I think it was like the first 10 downloads, the first hundred downloads. And even now when we just hit our 4,000, it may not sound like a lot, but for being 18 months, I've done none paid, like paid things to grow it. Like there's not a lot of businesses in three and a half years who are doing that. And at that level, when we just did our press release, we had 8 million views and 45 clicks, which was incredible. We were so proud of that my PR firm. And you guys, it may seem small right now, like the 4,000, but to me, it's like, oh my God, I'm so abundant. That's so big. I can't even imagine what I'm going to feel because every download, every listen isn't about the number to me. It's not how fast or quick I can get there. It's literally like, wow, you have chosen to tune in. You have chosen to be part of this community. You have chosen to be like, I'm going to be a leader in wanting to transform my life, wanting to have conversations about love and what I'm passionate about. And to me, that's why the numbers go so quickly, fast and what you shared. Like, but I've kind of don't have that intention anymore. When I first started my business, I definitely did. I was like this many followers, this many things. Like now, even after I got hacked on my new Instagram, it's like less, I think we have 300 followers now after like the 10,000 that we had. I'm making more sales with 300 people like than I was with the 10,000. Obviously, right. again, I closed the gap. I have more credibility on all the platforms and everything, but it just shows you like, just get started. Yeah, I, I think you hit on something very important and very telling of anybody, no matter what they do or don't do. And it is reach out to that one person. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember very early on in my years, I always wanted to reach out to just one person. If I could just mm-hmm. help one person, that's all I cared about. I used to speak in front of, you know, at the time, you know, when I would go to um, my place of faith, I would speak as a young boy in front of others. And we would do like this five minute or seven minute sermon. And I would just hope that I could reach to one person. That was all that I cared about. I didn't care about, you know, the 130 that were there. I cared about just, can I help one person? And then, you know, three, four weeks would pass and somebody would say, you know what, something that you know, you shared, I never thought about. And I always said, okay, good. And then I would take that as a remembrance of like, good, it helps somebody out. Cause then that would get me through the dark days of my own future later on where I was like upset or mad or angry. And then it's like, it takes one to listen to one. That's why I always make a note to say, look, if you yourself are positive or you're inspirational, or if you're motivating to me, I want to make sure to tell you that you motivate me or help me in my mm-hmm. life. And I'm sure you've had those moments too, because mm-hmm. although it is about the masses, what people don't understand, we never want to say you're just a number because you're not just a number, but to brands and to advertising and to be able to continue financing the day-to-day work that you're doing, you have to look at massive numbers for brands and other things, but we never lose sight. I think that's what makes you special and others that I've met like you that focus on the individual person, which is why your one-on-ones are so important because it's all about that one person. It's not about anybody else. It's about 
that person, what they're doing with their life, what they want to do with their life and where they want to go next. Yeah. So I love that. Well, I'm super grateful you came on and you shared so much wisdom. I know the community is going to love it and let's make sure they reach out to you. I know I'll leave it in the show notes, but if you want to just share your Facebook or Instagram here, um, and then any last words of wisdom before we wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me at Aaron M. Sanchez on all platforms, uh, on Facebook as well, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope TV, LinkedIn. I uh, love to connect with business like-minded people there as well. I also host a show called Two Men in Your Business, which uh, I want two men in your business and then some, because uh, people always go, well, where's the ladies? I'm like, we just, we didn't think of it. It was just literally two men talking about something. We said, what do we do? If we do, we could do it. We didn't want to bring anybody else in at the time. That was like uh, over four years ago. Um, but my point is this, um, no matter what you do or how you do it, know that you always have support, not just in the physical realm that we're in, but also the metaphysical realm that we sometimes don't completely understand each and every one of us. I know when I talk to certain Christians, certain Christians say, um, I don't know what you're talking about and that's foo-foo and I'm going to not think about that. And I say, yes, but you have faith of the unseen. If you have faith of the unseen, you have faith about a metaphysical realm, which some have said or labeled it as metaphysical. But what you don't understand is if you believe in angels and if you believe in God and you believe in things other than yourself, that is a term of metaphysical realms or the unseen. I just had this conversation with my mom about infrared light and uh, ultraviolet light and then visible light. And I said, where do you think angels coexist in? And then she said, well, both. I said, exactly. Even in your faith of the Bible, it shows that there were men that actually entertain angels. So they were able to manifest into humans, at least. And that's in the book of faith, also known as a holy book, also known as the Christian Bible. However, mm-hmm. there are other ones as well in Buddhism and also in Taoist theory and also in uh, Islam that all correspond with the invisible faith. So if you have faith of the seen, definitely have faith of the unseen. And then you'll understand why things are mm, suddenly like magical and are kind of uh, um, in a way helping you guide your life or helping you draw to the thing that you want to put out there. And if you can remember that, then you can remember we're not alone. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's so powerful. And even just knowing, like, I want to feel connection instead of like the feeling, the aloneness. So I love that. And for those of you tuning in and make sure to leave a review, share it with a friend, go follow Aaron. All of it will be in the show notes and I'll leave the link to our radio station or the one that we did. And you can follow him as well for all of his 8 AMs. Um, but I love you guys so much. Thank you for choosing to tune in to receive the frequency. And I can't wait as we continue to grow. And if you want to be part of the conversation off of just being here, make sure to head to my website and get the magical sticker activation badge. So you can put it on your laptop, your coffee cup and be a leader in the conversation. So people will come up to you asking like, what does the sticker mean? Or what does that happen? It gives you the opportunity to share your passion and knowledge of what this means to you. So I love you so much. And Aaron, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me.